Introducing Dr. Okechuku Enelama. Dr. Okechuku Enelama is the chairman of African Capital Alliance, ACA, a leading independent investment management firm sponsoring funds and managing investments across a variety of sectors in sub-Saharan Africa. He served as the Federal Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment in Nigeria from November 2015 to May 2019. Prior to his appointment to the Nigerian government, Dr. Enelama worked as the CEO of ACA. He also serves as the chairman of the governing board for the Nigerian University of Technology and Management, NUTM, a pioneering STEM and management university focused on nurturing leaders to transform Africa. Dr. Enelama's previous private equity experience was gained from Zephyr Management LP and Capital Zephyr Limited in New York and Johannesburg. Prior to his career in private equity, Mr. Enelama worked for Arthur Anderson in Nigeria and London and Goldman Sachs in New York and London. After first qualifying as a medical doctor, Dr. Enelama transitioned to a business career and qualified as a chartered accountant in Nigeria. He holds an MBA from Harvard Business School where he was a Baker Scholar and is a chartered financial analyst. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Okechuku Enelama. Um, so thank you for having me. I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes we, we can. can. And I'm yeah. going to stop presenting so that you can take over and share your slides, okay? Exactly. Thank you. We would like to share slides. Um, and while, while this slide is coming up, um, I'd like to just appreciate um, the organizers and, um, and just say thank you for inviting me. I have many friends from CIC, um, including many of the speakers and the uh, compare and MC or uh, compare and sort of moderator. I certainly uh, would like to acknowledge Chris Osondo, fondly called Hippie, who specifically asked me to join this um, colloquium today. And, um, you know, CIC and what you're doing, you know, like uh, Patrick, Patrick Okibo Jr. has said, or well, Triple has said, has made a lot of um, waves. And I can say in Government College of Maha, it's encouraging us. Let me say upfront that ours is not um, a capitalist model, but it's a different way of achieving the same goal of giving back to society, but to an independent trust, right, where you are running the school yourself. And I'll go through that. In fact, just listening to um, um, Patrick told me that, like, it's important that we share our story as well, just so that people can, like he said, look at the various models. I would also like to um, say that, um, you know, just the giving spirit of CIC has been an inspiration to many people. So please keep, the, keep doing the good work you're doing. I can tell you that people are watching and you're making an impact well beyond the shores of your old boy network and Enugu and in everything CIC represents. Um, I'm going to be sharing uh, a case study on Government College of Maha um, as, as a model, like was said. I won't spend too long on the first slide, although permit me to cover it briefly, which talks about the state of education in Nigeria. I mean, basically, this has been covered very um, elaborately by our keynote speaker, and some of the uh, speakers that spoke before me. But I'd like to um, um, identify these four factors, which, like I said, they had covered, of um, poor funding, decaying infrastructure, lack of quality teachers, and, and poor administration, or what you might call governance, how the schools are actually run, as uh, something that has led to the deterioration and the decay we see in our schools. And like we've said, and all agree, education is far too important to be allowed to continue without um, receiving help. You know, so what you will find is that like our own, mo the model we adopted was aimed at adopting, at addressing these four issues. And um, I would like to go to the next slide if Victor will permit me. Yeah, so this is what we call the Government College Umaha Restoration Model, right? So the first thing we did, we insisted that we wanted to, be, to take over the school. I understand that like also CIC has been handed over to you know, to the church and you are working with them. So, but we insisted that we wanted to take over the school first from the government. So we, we, that was the first assignment to basically establish a trust, to secure the ownership and professional governance or proper management of the school. We didn't think that just giving money to government or partnering with them would be sufficient. You know, so this, and this took a while by the way, eventually about five, six years ago, 
uh, the government of Abia State um, gave us, it allowed us to set up this trust. And even the way the trust was set up was professionally done, was done by KPMG. Um, I was involved in that process and the old boys backed it up. I'll talk more about the trust. So the trust was established in 2014. It's composed of a board of um, um, old boys, nine trustees, old boys. Abia State government has a representative there to in effect, look after the public interest in the school. And of course, the membership of this trust is open to not just old boys, even, even to the public. Having then been given the trust, which is an irrevocable trust, the next thing we took over the school from Abia State government, and so FEDT, Fisher Education Development Trust, as we're called, Fisher Education, Educational Development Trust, is now the, the, the sort of owner and, and, and let's say, uh, proprietor of Roman College Omaha. And the whole idea is to now restart the school under new ownership, under this sort of a new model, and to bring in people and to try and restore Government College Omaha to not just a former heights, heights but also to make it a, a school fit for 21st century education. You know, and um, I'll come back to the challenges we are trying to solve and how we've gone about it. Um, of course, we've gone about raising funds from old boys and the public. Like I said, um, this is not, you know, it's not a capitalist. We want it to be sustainable. And I'm sure um, our moderator will agree that if something can be put sustainable and be not for profit in the sense that like the resources, even if they are surpluses, will be reinvested, plowed back. Like happens with most um, institutions um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the other parts of the world, whether it's the US or the UK or elsewhere. You know, in fact, as you know, some of you know, Government College Omaha was called the eating of the East. I mean, you know, just based on um, the, 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 the quality of the products and of course, comparing to the quality of the products in the eating school in the UK, which also produces leaders. And of course, by no means is Government College Omaha exclusive in doing that. But the point was that, like he played his own part in that, and we want to we want that to come back. You know, now the utilization of the funds and the stewardship, of course, is vested with the, the trust, and um, you know the trust also has responsibility to make sure that our sustainability that I talked about is going on. So that's that's the model. I will now go to the next slide and talk about the challenges we are trying to solve and how far we've gone with that. Um, what you will find with this model, and this is something that we can discuss as part of um, the q and is that like, it, it means that like we have to raise the funds to run the school. The government is not contributing to it, you know? And, um, you know, so what this means is that this is no longer a government school in any sense, but it's now an independent school. And, and therefore the fundraising started with the old boys and then, and then other uh, donors in society. So as you can imagine, there's already some donor fatigue. So one of the questions then is that, how do you achieve a sustainable model? You know, for the future. And, and because we are still, it's still early days on this journey. In fact, when I was asked to speak to us, I was a bit reluctant because I felt that like, you know, the way the Holy Scriptures put it is that a man going to battle does not boast like somebody coming back from battle. I mean, we're still going to battle. This school is going to restart in September. So whatever I'm sharing is a delicate experiment that is in process, not something that is a success story that we're now, you know, brandishing or sharing with people. But I certainly think the model can be adopted like we're told earlier. Um, by other people, you know. So one of the things we're trying to overcome is how do we deepen the engagement by not just the old boys, well, first the old boys, but also other stakeholders. And we're also trying to establish an endowment along the lines we see mostly in the US and elsewhere and, 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 and in the UK and other parts of the world, you know. And the biggest point is stakeholder engagement. There's still a considerable amount of misunderstanding around, you know, the responsibilities of the trust versus the old boys and how we work hand in hand. You know, some members are reluctant to support the trust because they view it, you know, that's why I said I was happy that Patrick brought up the point. They look at it like some commercial venture by a few people as opposed to an attempt to establish an independent governance structure that will be sustainable to manage the school as is done for most top schools around the world. I mean, they're managed by independent trust. You know, of course, we are overcoming this by communicating openly, regularly. And in fact, I view this attempt or this um, opportunity to join you today as one more opportunity to communicate openly about what we're doing, you know? And of course, we've been having town hall meetings with our members, we have newsletters, we have press releases. I also want to learn, I mean, just from being here today already, I can see things that CIC is doing that we can learn from. I really would like to um, learn from what you're doing as we continue this march towards um, a great um, education comeback in Nigeria with these schools like CIC and GCU becoming role models. 
Let's go to what we have attained so far, achieved so far. The next slide, please. Like I said, we've um, taken over the school ownership, which is no mean feat. It took over 20 years of engagement of the state government to get there. And to, through a deed of trust that was signed in December 2014. You know, um, and in terms of funding, we've raised over 2 billion naira voluntarily, which means that like, we actually have money to start the school in terms of whatever funding deficits we're gonna have from school fees and all that, you know, from the foundation of one of our old boys. But, and we are rebuilding the infrastructure, we are bringing in new teachers. So everything is going to be, it's gonna be a new school, but based on the government college Omaha tradition. Uh, there's a high level of commitment from the old boys. The old boys have been just exemplary and um, inspiring their level of commitment, both diaspora as in abroad and the old boys in Nigeria. I must say the old boys in abroad have done a lot more than the old boys. I don't know whether you say with CIC, but we find that our diaspora folks are really, many respects, ones driving our fundraising and just our, our giving back. Um, it would be interesting to discuss why those in Nigeria are not as enthusiastic as um, as those that are those that are abroad, and I'd like to um, hear more about the CIC experience and what we can learn from that. You know, I'd like to share a couple of slides on just what the school looked like. In fact, I must. Uh, this was the old school before we took it over. Now, looking at CIC, you guys are, you know, way ahead of us, and maybe because your own restoration has been ongoing and and you've done it systematically over time. Ours was completely ignored, and we literally had to take it over. You can see how dilapidated some of the buildings are. Now we've taken over, we've started rebuilding uh, many of the facilities. Let's see the next slide. So this shows you, you know, we've rebuilt classrooms, dormitories, we have a new library, and we're now doing the landscaping in time for the reopening in September. Um, I, I'm sure that um, you will hear more about us as, as we succeed in this our project. So let me conclude with this, um, something that has already been said, that an investment in education is still the best investment. Whether for us as individuals, or frankly, as a nation, or uh, as a community like CIC or GCU or, or, or at whatever level. So what we're doing today is incredibly important and I'm glad that I was invited to join. Thank you for listening. I would be happy to take any questions at the time the moderator permits me to do so. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Um, and like I said, I'm super excited that you're on this call and I look forward to the panel discussion and exploring and exchanging uh, or the cross-pollination of ideas on how the private sector can get more involved in uh, public uh, school management. Um, permit me to invite uh, my, my colleagues to cue the introduction um, for Professor Chibike 